Okay, let's look at testing equality in Prolog. So there's two different types of equality and, and also negation. We're going to see if things are already identical, that's the equal equal ones here on the bottom, or if they can be unified. And what can be unified means is, hey, at some point in the future, could there be a consistent set of variable bindings where the variable a, x is equal to the variable y? With these descriptions, you should pause and see if you can predict what these should what these should print in Prolog. Hopefully most of these are pretty intuitive. Once you think through, okay, could they be unified? Are they already the same, etc. Ones that might be surprising is in the top left, a lowercase a equals capital X. So capitals again are variables. And it's saying, oh, can these be unified? And instead of just saying true, it says, oh yeah, if these were unified, the variable x would have to be equal to a. And similarly, in number four here, can x be unified with capital Y? So those are both variables, and it's like, oh yeah. And prolog, remember, always tells me what the consistent set of variable bindings is if it has one. So yes, x can be unified with y. Let's look at a similar thing in prolog. Okay, I have my prologue interpreter on my left and my prologue facts uh, in the file colors.pl on the right. And I have two of the commands, you know, can A be unified with B? No, that's false. Can A be unified with A? That's true, because here I wasn't using variables. And let's look at the example, X, can X be unified with A? It says, oh yeah, that would mean that X would have to be A. Just like I'll load in my colors file, and I can say, oh, colors orange. And that'll tell me if colors orange is in the database by comparing to each of the facts in my database here on the right. Okay, Oop. I have a typo in there. C correct to colors orange, that's pretty nice of it. So yes, so color blue will say true color pink will say false because it's not in there. If I say color what, it'll give me all the variable bindings and I can hit semicolon to get the rest of them. So it gives me all the consistent set of variable bindings. What could be red, what could be orange, what could be yellow, etc. So we saw when we said can x be unified with a, it gave us one consistent set of variable bindings. That would be the same as if we type mud color. That's, I only have one fact for that. Mud color what? It says, oh, what could be black? So it gave me one consistent set of variable bindings. That doesn't mean now that what is somehow black. It isn't. That was only within prologue's inferences. Mud has one more school color, so I'm going to add mud color gold and reload the file. Now we're going to look at a rule called awesome school colors. And I want it to be true if you put in two inputs, one of gold and one of black. I just made the font a little smaller. So if I type black, gold, this should be true. And if I type gold, black, it should be true. The catch is, I don't want gold gold to be true. And similarly, black black. Okay, I can also put variables in there. I'll put C1 for color one and C2 for color two. And it's gonna say, oh, Color 1 could be black, C2 could be gold, or C1 could be gold and C2 could be black. Okay, and that's all I've got. I've got two consistent set of variable bindings. On the right, I've got my code for this. And what it does is it checks, well, is color 1 a mud color? And is color 2 a mud color? And then let's make sure at the end that color 1 cannot be unified with color 2 so that we don't get gold gold being true. And let's look at how that executes if we trace it. So 
So instead of using my variable name C1 and C2, it's using underscore G2763 and underscore G2764. So I can go to the next step by creeping. And now it executes my first subquery, mud color, color one. But instead of using color one, it used underscore G2763 because it has to be consistent with, with this piece right here. Okay, if I go to the next step, it says, oh yeah, that variable could be black. And then it executes my next subquery with 64, which was my color two or C2. It compares it to the database and it's like, oh yeah, that one could be black. But then it checks, is black not already the same as black? So it fails and has to redo. So this one gave us a variable binding that was then inconsistent in my next subquery. So it goes back up and re-executes this step. It says, oh, this one could be gold. And then, is black not already the same as gold? So it's exit, that means it's true instead of fail. And now, awesome school colors, black, gold. And so it gives me one set of variable bindings. It can do the same thing to figure out the other variable binding, or the other order, gold, black. Let's look at that. So it starts in the same way with my first subquery, color, mud color, color one and it figures out that could be gold. So again, it's just redoing some of those subqueries. So it went back up to subquery one. Once it finds gold, it sees what mud color color two could be. It could be black. Then it checks, is gold not already the same as black it can't? So that exits and doesn't fail. Then we say awesome school colors, gold, black. So then it tells me about that consistent set of variable bindings. I can tell it semicolon to say look for more. And it's going to go back up, redo that last mud color, color two one. It's going to say, oh, color two could be gold. But then it checks, is gold not already the same as gold? That fails. So ultimately that query fails. And then it says false. I have no more consistent set of variable bindings. OK, now I have a new query, checks inequality too early. And you'll see it's exactly the same as awesome school colors, except I check, is color one not already the same as color two? Before I call the subqueries mud, mud color, color one, and mud color, color two. Let's look at how this one works. Okay, it's gonna work when I don't put in variables. That one looks right. This should be false. Okay, that works. This should be false. And this should be true. Okay, that works. What doesn't work is if I put variables in. Here it says what could be black or what could be gold. But I already have that line in there. Is color one not already the same as color two? The catch is that it does that before it knows what color two is. So here I put what in for color two. So when it did color one does not equal to color two, what it was doing was color one was black. So it checks if black is not already equal to my variable what. And it's not, so that's true. That subquery succeeded and it went on to the next subquery. But then in the end, we figured out what could be black which if we reran that query would have made this fail. But the catch is we don't rerun this query. Let's look at this with trace to see what's happening. So here's our query with the variable what replaced with underscore G2764. Okay, so it checked if black was not already equal to that variable. That's true. So it exits instead of fails. Then it goes on to the next check. Mud color black, that succeeds. Mud color with this variable, which was our what. That succeeds by binding that variable to black. And then our entire query is true because it doesn't go back and check that equality again. So it tells me, oh yep, I found a consistent set of variable bindings. What can be black? It can do the same thing and this is where it's gonna find gold.
Okay, I've added a new predicate. I want to be able to figure out what are all the colors that are not mud colors. Maybe you can tell from how I named it, this one's not going to work. The slash plus means not. So a subquery with slash plus is only true if that subquery would otherwise be false. So not mud color broken black should be false. Okay, that works. This also works. Red is not a mud color. What doesn't work is if I want it to fill in the variables. Here, it just says false if I put in a variable. And the reason is it has no idea what what could be. Let's trace it. So it tries to execute that query. Then it calls mud color. It figures out mud color could be black. So it found one, which means that the not of that is not true. So slash plus mud color is false and it fails. How do we fix that? What I'm going to do instead is first run the predicate color C. And what that'll do is create a variable binding for my variable C. Let's check it out. This still works. Okay, what about the variables? Now it's going to list all of the colors that are not mud colors. How did it do that? Let's trace it. So here was my query it was running. It says, okay, well, what could color be? Oh, color could be red. And then mud color red fails, which actually means that not mud color red found a consistent set of variable bindings because of that not. So it says, oh, what could be red? And then it can do this same thing. And the key piece is that first it executes this subquery and it figures out the variable underscore G2763 could be orange. And then because of that, it can figure out, oh yeah, that's not a mud color. Oops, I accidentally stopped before we got through all of them. So the important lessons here are, when we're checking for equality, say, if color one is not the same as color two, we want to do that as late as possible, after the other subqueries have figured out what those variable bindings are. Similarly, when we want to use not on a subquery, we want to do that late so that we make sure that we have all of the possible variable bindings that we need. A great way to think about prolog is to think about, I'm going to run subqueries, to create variable bindings. And then in a next subquery, I might use those variable bindings. That's going to be a pattern that's consistent across prolog. Good luck.